Hi there and welcome to another edition of What's the Word in association with Ladbrokes. I'm Tom Malone. I'm joined this week by Tom Ladbrokes, uh, Shane Mann. We've got Danny Mullins back in the saddle as well, although unfortunately he's not back in an actual saddle for the moment. And Johnny Ward steps in at full forward as well to join the team too. So how are you guys? All good, Tom. Good, Thanks. Yeah. Good yeah. stuff. A quick update from Danny, who, by the way, schooled the previous panel he was on uh, and this, and the, on this show. But Danny, quick injury update from you. How's things? Yeah, not too bad, uh, although the specialist lacked my optimism. I was hoping to be back this week, but uh, she's not seemed to clear me for another few weeks, so I might, might make it back onto the couch again. Okay, so uh, just a reminder as well, we have a comments competition. So €100 Euros free bet up for grabs, courtesy of Ladbrokes. And we've also got a couple of uh, pairs of tickets as well for the Dublin Racing Festival. So uh, well done as well to Sean Corbett, who picked Dortmund Park last week. And also uh, there we have uh, Luke Keener as well who picked up the tickets for the uh, for the Dublin Racing Festival. So again, Commons competition. It's a lucky dip for the tickets, and it's the biggest prize winner for the uh, 100 euro free bet. And get those comments in early as well. Well done to the chancer who tried to get in on Tuesday with the 20 to 1 winner on Saturday. But you know, you have to have them in by, <laughs> you have to have them in by uh, midday on Saturday. A uh, quick question to start things off. I'm going to start with you, Shane. I'm still slightly scarred by your selection on the music. So who would play you oh, in yeah. a movie? As I said to you beforehand, Tom, Possibly the one I was thinking about earlier on, maybe, I don't know, Jay Gyllenhaal out of the day after tomorrow or something like that. I'm struggling big time, of course, with all the scandals going on at the minute to try and keep it clean as well. So okay, bear Derek. that in mind. I don't okay, know. Derek. I don't think yeah. people would associate you with a sexual predator just because you happen to look <laughs> yeah. like someone. So, you know, <laughs> relax. Or, then, else, you know. or, or unless or there else, is yeah. something. Uh, Danny, what about you? I don't know. I, I suppose I'd flip a coin between Bradley Cooper or Johnny Depp. They seem like good lads that enjoy the time, so I go with them. Good stuff. I did put a six-month ban on anyone who suggested uh, George Clooney or Brad Pitt, by the way. So, Johnny, you're up next it's one. It's got to be Johnny Ward, the guy in Love, Hate. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, no, the less yeah. famous one. I know, but it'll be really handy for him as well. Absolutely. Because I wouldn't get confused. Absolutely, yeah. He'd do a good job. Cool. Yeah. It's not like they trained him in acting skill or anything for that. Yeah. Uh, right, let's move on to the uh, action on Saturday as well. We'll start with Cheltenham. Give us a couple of prices there, Shane, for the uh, this Bet Pride trial, the, the Cotswold Chase. Yes, so 225 start, Tom, an ITV race as well. Uh, Bristol, am I would imagine, be a very short price. 5 to 4 at the minute with Labrooks. The last Samurai, 9 to 2. American is at 5 to 1. Definitely red, 11 to 2. Uh, T for 2, 8 to 1. 25 to 1, Theatre Guide. 25, single farm payment. And perfect candidate, double carpet, 33 to 1. Danny, is Bristol the the Group 1 horse in the Group 2 here? Or? I don't think so. I think he was very good in Haydock, but I think watching that day, I was worried it would leave its mark on him, and I think that definitely showed in Kempton. He ran nowhere near that yeah. form. I think uh, they're going to do a great job to get him back for this race. The horse I like here is definitely red. Off the bridle all the way down the back in entry the last day. On a track, I don't <coughs> think it'd suit him. Cheltenham, the, the new course is going to be a lot stiffer then the entry the last day and you know he was unlucky last year saddle slipped at Beechers in the National this might be the one to set him up for another tilt at the National this year Will you be with him? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Johnny your thoughts on this race? I'm taking on the favourite as well I think there's an interesting pace angle here if he's I was going to say if definitely yeah. red and Bristol Demai go for this mm. and I, I think that kind of killed him a bit in Kempton I thought the been taken on by Might Bite certainly didn't help. Might Bite had the ability to get away with this, but he didn't. And uh, I think he's reliant on, on soft, at least soft ground. He's going to get softer ground maybe here than he did at Kempton. But if you look at the race in the King George, it kind of fell into T42's lap. And uh, I think he's a bit of each way value here. I think he's going to get that good pace to sit off and basically come there. He's around about. Six seven to one, Shane. Uh, T for two currently. Johnny is at eight to one. Eight to one. Yeah. So that's I think that's a top price. I yeah. think each way were the dead eight runners. Um, he wouldn't necessarily be totally reliant on it being uh, you know going at loggerheads up top, but I think he's a fair each way chance. He stays well. Yes, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. Let's move on to the uh, Ballymore Novices then at 3 o'clock, another uh, grade two. A race has sort of thrown up more Albert Bartlett type horses in the past than, than uh, Ballymore horses, but it, is Santini top of the market there? Yeah, just working off the tissue price at the moment for this uh, grade two at Chatham, the 3 o'clock. Uh, on Saturday, Tom Santini around about five to two at the minute, uh, seven to two Pacific. Uh, De Bruyne was really impressive last time in for Nicky Henderson. Then we go about five to one Mulcahy's Hill, eleven to two Ticken Bar, and we're going to go eight Bar. Danny, anything jumping off the page for this? I'd stick with Henderson's horse Santini. He was good in Newbury, but does lack experience here. Uh, Mulcahy's Hill has plenty of runs over hurdles, but flashed his tail the shallow novice hurdle in Newbury last day, so I wonder about his attitude and yeah. I'd stick with Henderson's one. I would have loved to see 
Henderson, the other horse, came and taken for Yeah, Dakey's desperate chance name, here. But yeah, you good horse. But uh, I think if they're going with Santini, they must think he's going to take a lot yeah, of Yeah, Nicky Henderson appears yeah. to have a pretty decent group of novices this year as well. Definitely. Johnny, your thoughts? I think he's the only English trainer, really, with that has novices. proper novices. Yeah. Um, you know, he obviously has on the blind side as well, so he yeah. could have been... Mr. Whip won the Leamington last week. Yeah, um, and if... if, if I think if the British are to have a reasonable Cheltenham, Nicky will have to have a very good Cheltenham. Um, but the other trainer maybe who will have Cheltenham aspirations is Colin Tizard. He's had a fairly frustrating season, but Slate House, to me, is still a very, very promising horse. He won't come into his own until he goes chasing. Um, but stepping up and trip has to suit him. He, he's probably been getting away with the trip. A little bit disappointing the last day, but he, he's fine around Cheltenham, as he's shown. Um, I think he's going to be a very, very good chaser. Um, it's been a tough season for, for Tizard, but... He has to give weight away to a couple of the good horses, but I think he's interesting. Santini, you know, if Santini were to bolt up, maybe the likes of Sam Crow could look and say he has some sort of a challenger yeah. from here, but at the moment, I don't think he has. You don't think so. Fair enough. Uh, on to the Cleve Hurdle then, and actually last time you were in, Danny, we chatted about this as well. Uh, horses moving from fences to hurdles. A case here with Finian Tosco, who tops the market. Um, what do you make of that move, first of all, before you make those chances? Yeah, it's an <coughs> interesting move. I think maybe a bit premature. You know, he was... Never going to be fast enough in the race in Sandown. He's off the bridle all the yeah. way down the back. And unlucky not to win in Ascot the last day by a horse, you know. Yeah, Benatar's a decent horse. Yeah, it was a good race, similar ratings. And, you know, just unlucky not to get back up. I, I think they should have stuck at the chase in a bit longer. But he definitely comes in here with a good chance. Johnny, your thoughts on this? I couldn't have him at all because I just think he's so much to prove. I mean, this was not the plan. And... He's not a great chaser, but that doesn't mean he's going to now seamlessly revert to hurdles as well as save the trip. I mean, what can you say about beer goggles? Um, oh, I couldn't. I can't handle it. This you know, I, and yeah. I think he's a good chance. You know, and not only is the context of the week, you know, the overwhelming theme here, but he's such a tough horse himself that if any horse were there to kind of do something for something up above or a greater yeah. power, it's beer goggles. I um, think. I think that could turn me to be perfectly mm. honest if that mm. horse wins I, yeah. I think I'll have a, a different outlook on life but a uh, quick thought on the price this Shane yes so Finian's Oscar 3-1 to one favourite as it stands Tom then we go 7-2 Hulse on the world's end 5-1 to one. Thomas Campbell who I actually fancy at 6-1 to one. Beer Goggles then at 6-1 to one. Agra Paradise and it's said uh, 10s bar couple in here price up for the stairs hurdle as well we got 12 to 1 currently Finian's Oscar 14 to 1 Hallstone and also Thomas Campbell 25 to 1 for the stairs in March good stuff I, I think as well Hallstone I, I think could be the one here to yeah. beat and his Cheltenham record is fantastic I think he's Ran six times around there, maybe one, three or four, and placed every other time. Yeah, he won in this card last year as he well. He did, and was ran well behind Penn Hill <coughs> and Albert Bartlett last year. I think, you know, this was the plan all the way along. As Johnny said, it was an afterthought with Finian's Oscar, and I think he's the one to beat here. Although it would be arguable to say everyone would love to see Beer Goggles yeah. winning. I think Hallstone will take the beating. Good stuff, right? Let's uh, move on to Doncaster. Skybet Chase up coming from there at 3.15. Uh, David Russell goes over to ride Lammy Surge here. Talk about horses flip-flopping between. Yeah. It's been a theme all week. Mm. What do you make of this I one? much prefer a horse going hurdling and then chasing, rather. I think they just jump a bit slicker because they've been maybe at lower obstacles or whatever. But uh, what a prospect this is, see Davy on this horse. He's, he's not entirely straightforward, yeah. but he probably does. He jumps fine, really. Um, he can jump a little bit left, but it won't be a problem around Doncaster. Um, I think he's fascinating. I'm, I'm not sure if he's going to be 100% ready for this or if he's a longer goal in mind, but Davey going over there, eschewing the chance to presumably ride a couple of nice horses in Ireland tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure I'd back him, but I think he will take the beating and I can't wait to watch it. Did he look like a potentially good partnership to you? I definitely think so, yeah. It's a, it's a real positive to see Davey heading over to ride him. You know, he, he used to jump left over fences before. That won't be a problem around Doncaster. Chases down the inside rail all the way Davy will slot in and get him jumping well you know if you go back to his previous uh, run over fences his third to Black Hercules in a JLT yeah. second and entry the run after that with Sizen John back in third on the day he has to give weight away around all around here but class horse and I think he's going to take all the beating the world of beating no doubt uh, we move on to Fairy House quite briefly you got the Solarina Mare's Hurdle it's actually a big weekend for the Bow family because you got the Limestone Lad on Sunday Solarina on Saturday anything jumping off the page to hear Johnny? Uh, well yeah I mean if there is a star here it's probably Lorena who won at uh, Fairy House looking forward to seeing what the man beside me says about her um, 
I think Cracker Dancer is a fine mare going forward, but funnily enough, I don't think the ground's actually going to be heavy enough for her, if that's possible yeah. after the racing we've had the last week or so. I think she wants it bottomless, and I think probably further. Great, great uh, chasing prospect, maybe, but Lorena looked to have a bit of class, I thought, at Tremor. Um, she's actually in the mare's novice betting, and if you're to back her, you have to back her before this race, obviously. Yeah. Your thoughts on this, Johnny? Definitely, yeah, I'd, I'd be agreeing with Johnny here. I think Lorena has bags of potential. What she shows at home is very good. She needs to go and prove it. You know, Tremor was maybe a race of nothing, and I think she's going to take a lot of beating here. Crack and Dancer, you know, she'll need soft ground. Uh, Ansi Valavi is one I wouldn't rule out yet. Coming back in trip here, I wonder, she made a bit of a mistake up the back the last day in Limerick, and I wouldn't rule her out for an each way yeah. bet here. Good stuff. We might move on to some quick bets around the cards on Saturday. Anything else jumping off the cards? Just yeah. Shane, you fancy yeah, it's going to be. I, I mentioned earlier on, Tom, about uh, Thomas Campbell. I think he's way overpriced in the. What race was it again? Cleve Hurdle. The Cleve Hurdle, yeah. I mean, you know, back with Nico de Bindful once again. Uh, for the race, uh, making the step back into great a company from, and I mean, he's a fantastic record at Cheltenham. I think he's three from four. The only race he was beaten was the Martin Pipe last season when potentially he was given too much to do. And I also fancy Rupert with Johnny as well, uh, T for two in the Cotswolds. I think he's only rated like three pounds inferior to, to Bristol de Mai. Finished 20 plus lengths in front of him, albeit Bristol de Mai didn't get his ground yeah. uh, in the King George, but um, it's a lot of lengths to find. Anything else on the Saturday cards jumping out at you, Johnny? I'd like to keep an eye on Expatriate in the Cleve Hurdle. You know, he'd ran well last year in the Triumph Hurdle, got loose before the start and finished fourth that day. And I don't think he's good enough to win it, but if he were to run well there, it might leave a good form line for the Limestone Lad Hurdle at Sandsend on the Sunday. Okay, and Johnny, anything else for Saturday from you? Poor Man's Hill should win Poor back uh, over hurdles. And um, yeah. Basically, I have, have a couple for Sunday, um, but poor man's hill on Saturday. Okay, we'll get to Sunday. Let's yeah. move on to Sunday. So uh, we're moving to Nice on Sunday. Big day there at Nice because they're opening their new uh, pavilion in Grandstand. A couple of graded races as well. Got the limestone lad hurdle and, of course, that Woodlands chase as well. Uh, we'll start with the limestone lad hurdle. won by some seriously classy animals down through the years. Anything you fancy in this? Yeah, uh, this is a very interesting race, actually. And I suppose to mention NACE itself, um, just the fact that they are opening up this new yeah. owners and trainers, it looks really, really good. And like I think there's going to be a fantastic vantage point if you want to actually go there and watch the horses. And I think if you're looking after owners and trainers, NACE are doing a great job. Um, this is a very, a very tough, tough race to solve, I think, to be honest, Tom. The horse of uh, J.P. McManus is Destin de Jonk. Uh, he actually appeared in the gallops for the Dublin Race Festival at Leopardstown. I think he's probably miles better than he showed yeah. the last day at Limerick, and he's a very tentative selection. But Dolciano Dici. Oh, yeah. So he's uh, in the Slaneyville Syndicate colours, and his owner, Lara Byrne, says he's very well regarded. Um, Lara, of course, of Hardy Uses fame. Yeah. Um, they had a little bit of tragedy in the syndicate recently, so this will be another very emotional winner um, at the weekend. Um, so, horse to keep an eye on. But I'm going with Destin de Young, the other French name. Good stuff. Uh, Danny, you fancy anything in the lines on that? Yeah, I think Sandsend here uh, will improve a lot from Limerick at Christmas, as I was saying earlier. Keep an eye on Expatriate on Saturday. If he holds up the form, you know, I think he's going to take a bit of beating here. But as Danny was saying, Dolciana Dici did show a few nice things before Christmas and eventually didn't run down in Limerick and he could be one at an each way price but yeah. interesting that Paul's gone for Sandsend and I'd bet it's really towards guide. him. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, we'll move on to the 2.30 at, uh, at Nice as well. I've got the Woodlands Chase. Shane, I don't think we actually have uh, many prices for that. No, I'm actually going to have a look at that because I wrote down the tissue prices earlier on. Jury Duty will be around about 6 to 4. Uh, there won't be too much between them, however, between uh, Jury Duty and Live Love Laugh, who will be around about 13 to 8. Moulin Avant, 5 to 1. Just the five of them, of course. 6 to 1, Moss Bank, and then 50 to 1 to Danny's back. In the Woodlands, who would you like to be sitting on if you had the choice, Danny? If you could rule out Moulin Avant's run in Leopardstown the last day, I'd give him a great chance here. His run back in Fairy House, uh, where he, he won that day, Mon Bagnatorius was second, won the Thiestes yesterday, and Bomb Bomb O'Miel, I wrote for Willie, was fourth and was impressive in Navin since. And I wonder, was Leopardstown's ground just too fast for him here, back on slow ground? Nace, three miles, you need a real Stiff, slogger. Like, yeah. And I, I think he could be the value in the race. Jury duty, you know, he was a good staying hurdler and looks classy, but 
if I was going from a betting point of view, I might take a chance on Moulin Avant. Moulin Avant, for you, Johnny? Pretty much exactly what Danny said. Good stuff. Okay, local. Let's move on to the rest of the nice card. Anything else jumping out at you for, uh, for Sunday? I'm going to be a little bit cryptic here. Okay, do. You're going to have a double at Nace, right? Okay. And you have to think of a, a, a race at Cheltenham, which is titled The Close Brothers. And that's all I'm going to say. Okie dokie. There's not a whole lot else standing out for me at the moment, but I, I think take a chance on Moulin Avant in the chase. Fair enough. Anything for you at Nathan's? No, not for, not for me. Fair Good enough. stuff, right? Let's, uh, we'll have a little think about our best bets. Remind you again about the comments competition. Again, biggest prize winner in the comments. And get those comments in before noon on Saturday. They get the 100 euro free bet from Ladrox. Also, there'll be a lucky dip for those Dublin Racing Festival tickets. So time now for our best bets. Best bets of the weekend and a little multiple because of course Ladbrokes go best odds guaranteed in shops between 11 and 1. So Shane. And yeah, don't forget as well, we're, our late to lose offering all the ITV action on the Saturday cards between Doncaster and Cheltenham as well. Going to go with the treble Tom, uh, Thomas Campbell who I mentioned earlier on in the Cleave Hurdle in the Skybet Chase, Lammy Surge. Hopefully if it finds enough off the bridle to win that best backed horse of the week, open up 10 to 1 on Monday and 8, 3 to 1 uh, today. And then finally T for 2 in the Cotswolds. Good stuff, Danny. I'd start off with Lorena as probably the banker of the weekend, yeah. but for the treble, I'd put Lorena, Lamy Surge, I think in Doncaster, I think class horse in the race, and I'd go with definitely Red. I think he's, he'll gallop around Cheltenham and take the beating there. Good stuff. Johnny, you giving us the treble? Yeah, or are you I'll, just going to I'll, give, horses? I'll give Lorena, I'll give Lorena <laughs> obviously that double at Nace as well, and uh, poor Man's Hill should win from an English perspective. I think T for two each way. Good stuff, right? I'm going with uh, Maria's Benefit, Bristol Demai, and also Indian Hawk in the 205 from Doncaster. So thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you again next week for more across the world.